Bhattacharya et al. assume that students have had principles of economics, and some of you might have had principles of economics, but I, I haven't looked at the survey answers yet, and indeed they're not due till tomorrow. So uh, I thought I'd put up a screencast that talks you through some of the economic principles that underlie Chapter 2, uh, which is the demand for health care. Uh, so here we go. Um, we are starting with this chapter because for many healthcare policy questions, the nature of people's price responsiveness to, to uh, well, well, when they make decisions about how much health care they use, uh, really turns out to determine quite a bit of um, how well or poorly policy interventions are going to work. And uh, so, so let's get started on this. Um, the main piece of knowledge that it's assumed that students understand and, and it's central to the chapter is the, the basic econo economic analysis of, of the demand side of the market. And, and notice what's going on here on the, on the horizontal axis. Let me switch to a pointer so I don't mess up my graph too bad. On the, on the x-axis, we've got the quantity of health care. And I, I've made a, an approximation here. I would just assume that we could talk about units per year. And if we're talking about physician services, we're talking doctor's office visits per year. If we're talking radiology, we have number of x-rays per year, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm just units of, of the healthcare good or service. And then on the, on the y-axis, we've got the price uh, of per unit of that good. And the basic law of demand, the basic demand relationship, economists, uh, actually we call it the law of demand, is, is a downward sloping relationship for pretty much any good that we can think of. And, and that's why we call it the law of demand. And, and just think about your own experience. Um, let's say you really like Pop-Tart pop cereal. If Pop-Tart cereal were priced really high, I've got this high price P naught, whatever it is, let's say it's $10 a box. Well, you know, you like Pop-Tarts pop every now and then, maybe you'll splurge. But, you know, you're not going to be eating Pop-Tarts every single day. On the other hand, if, if Pop-Tarts, Tarts were two dollars a box, um, and and you really like pop tarts, you know you you and everybody else like you would buy more. Some people that wouldn't buy any up here at at ten dollars a box would buy some uh, at at two dollars a box. So there's people entering the market, but also people that like pop tarts and might have bought them every month, one box a month would would buy more of them at the lower price. So we've got this downward sloping, this negative relationship between own price of the good and the quantity demand. And that's, that's basically enough to know about the demand curve. Um, when we talk about price responsiveness, we, we can illustrate that in, with the demand curve. Um, but, but then we use various measures, most importantly, the elasticity of demand, the own price elasticity of demand, to, to talk with a, in shorthand about um, the, the nature of that responsiveness. So basically, if, if I've got a really steep demand curve, uh, let me get back to a pen, let's go, go to black. If I've got a really steep demand curve for healthcare, what this means is that even if healthcare got really, really went from being really expensive to really cheap in terms of dollars per unit, my usage wouldn't really change very much. Q not. It would go up a little, but notice for that dramatic price change, I, I hardly increased my consumption at all. And that, that's a, a demand for health care that's not very price responsive. Um, on the other hand, if you know, all of a sudden, yeah, and it, well, some policy analysts say, hey, you know, people go to the doctor when they really need to. They don't like going to the doctor. There's plenty of frictions. Even if it were free, people aren't going to use much more. It's it, basically they're arguing that, that the demand curve is really steep. On the other hand, uh, if people are very responsive, very price responsive to, to health care demand, let's just assume that we start at the same place, but we're on this different demand curve that turns out to be really flat. Oh, I can't even, can't even, I didn't leave myself enough 
room to even draw the usage way out here. Well, anyway, the the let's let's back up. Sorry to distract. Let's let's not be so exaggerated about it. So if, let's say we're we're more responsive and we have a demand curve that's flatter but not quite as flat as I had before. And we start at the same price and quantity, but, but now because we give insurance or whatever, the price drops. Um, now though, if, if people are very responsive to changes in price, now that price drop is gonna lead to a very large increase in the quantity demanded. And that would, that would, uh, that would be a very, re price responsive demand curve. And it really matters what we're talking about here. If I make something that was very expensive, cheap or free, well, then people are going to be taking their kids into the doctor every time they cough. And, you know, you're going to go in and, you know, to the doctor when you could have called up, um, oh, I can't remember the health care site on, on the internet that's pretty good, but doctors.com, whatever it might be. And, and you could have looked up what over-the-counter cream would have fixed that rash without visiting the doctor. But what the heck, it's free, you live nearby. Um, if, if, if price is low, you know, it's conceivable that, that we get a lot more usage. And this is the one of, if not the great empirical question underlying healthcare uh, economics, in, in particular as it pertains to the demand for healthcare. Well, much to the chagrin of students everywhere, we... Um, we talk about the, oh, I hit the wrong. We talk about the price elasticity of demand as a shorthand and as, a, as an empirical measure for this price responsiveness that I explained in graphical terms. And basically price elasticity of demand is simply the ratio of the percentage change in quantity demanded of a good divided by the, the associated percentage change in price of a demand curve. And I'm going to back up a screen. Basically, what we're talking about when we talk about price elasticity of demand is, is as we move along a stationary demand curve, if the demand curve sh shifts, this, is out, this discussion is out the window. But if we're moving along a single demand curve, we, we want to know how responsive we take the percent change in quantity demanded and divide it by the percent change in price, and we get this elasticity measure. And there's not that much going on. We, we know, uh, I say that, and I know this is going to vex students, so I, I'm lying, I guess. Um, we know how to take a percent change in, in quantity demanded, and that's always in the numerator of the price elasticity of demand. If, if my quantity demand goes from 10 to 20, the new quantity is... 20, the old quantity was 10, the, the change is, the incremental change is 10. I started at 10, the base level is 10, so 10 divided by 10 is 1, okay, uh, which is times 100, 100%. If price had fallen from, remember they're always moving in the opposite direction, so for in, quantity demand is increasing, that means price is falling. If price was 100 and now is 90, well the incremental change is negative 10 and the base is 100, so um, we've got a, um, a point one, uh, negative point 0.1 in the denominator, then we've got negative 10. We've, we've got 100 um, times, uh, sorry, we've got 100 divided by point 0.1 times 100, which is, point 0.1 is 10%. So 100% divided by 10% is, ne is 10 Notice there's no percents or anything. There's no units and elasticities. Um, so, so, you know, it, it, fundamentally, it's the ratio of two percent changes, and all of us can take percent changes, and all of us can take ratios of numbers and put them in our calculator. But with that said, this elasticity is, is always a beast for students, and I, I'm aware of that. We'll do some practice in class on um, uh, when, tomorrow, tomorrow as it happens. Another way to uh, write that out is, you know, the percent change of quantity demand divided by ch percent change in price. We can take the new quantity minus the old quantity over the old quantity. We usually use that old quantity as a base, and, and especially when changes in price, changes in quantity are pretty small, that's fine. So that was running through my example. The new quantity was 20, the old quantity was 10, the old quantity was 10, 
times 100. Notice that these 100s cancel out when we're taking this ratio. So I, I often just, just focus on this portion of this relationship because 100 over 100 is 1. So this is the proportionate change instead of the percent change divided. The proportionate change in quantity divided by the proportionate change in price. Um, and, you know, same for price. Then we take the ratio and, and we've got it. Now, when we talk about big changes, the arc elasticity of demand is the one we use. And basically, what an arc price or a midpoint method of calculating elasticity is all about, we use not 10 or 20 in, as our base in the change in quantity in my numerical example, but we use 15. And, and that uh, is a little bit more precise because we're moving along the portion of the demand curve between quantity 10 and quantity 20, and 15 captures that better. Likewise, we're moving um, between 90 and 100, 190 said properly, and so we'd use 95 instead of 100. And so that's, this is the form, formula that the book uses, but all we're doing is just changing this base to be the midpoint, and you know, otherwise it's the same. So this will vex you. We'll practice it tomorrow, but now you've seen it, and hopefully that, that makes a dent on improving your understanding.